let me give you some advice. If you're anything like me, then you'll have seen a masterclass advert like this. Or this. Beautiful. Or this. The precision, the aim, the accuracy, baby. The site boasts some of the biggest names in sports, cooking, acting, art, science, and, uh, sleep. Sleep is the elixir of life. Now, cooking is far too close to witchcraft for my liking, I have never seen a basketball, and in my book, acting counts as bearing false witness, and so should be punishable by death. But there's one thing I do care about, and that's the work of the best-selling fantasy writer Neil Gaiman. I've been reading his books for years, he's written some of my favourites, so the prospect of a Gaiman masterclass course, a look behind the curtain, seemed too good to be true. But today, we're trying to answer one question. Is. It. Worth it. I'm Neil Gaiman, and this is my masterclass. <laughs> Book. <laughs> For all the fun I have in life insulting people's art, Kicking a book in the stomach because it didn't quite bring me to orgasm or bring my nan back to life. I'm owl enough to admit. I suppose I'm just man person enough to admit because my fursuit is in the wash this week. When I really do love a body of fiction. Body of fiction. It's a it's a pun. <clears throat> you you get it. You're you're a smart person. You're watching a book channel. One day I'll do a video gushing over Stoner or Piranesi or anything Somerset Maugham ever wrote. But today. We're sticking our faces into Neil Gaiman's presumably hairy crotch. I'm a massive Gaiman fan, of his writing at least. Stardust was the first of his books I ever read, and it's one of the books I credit with getting me into the whole business of reading in the first place. Neverwhere brought my home of London to life in fantastical detail. The ocean at the end of the lane filled my flinty heart with wonder, even if the stage version sucked all kinds of ass. 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 Or ass sucked all kinds of bum. To this day, I'll reread American Gods just to exist in that magical but also grim world he created. Then there's the Sandman series, Coraline, Good Omens, Art Matters with Chris Riddell. Remember this one; it will, uh, it will come back. Whatever it is, the man just can't seem to miss, except for that Duran Duran biography. But we don't talk about the Duran Duran biography. I won't try and hide my fanboyism. There's nothing the man's ever written that I haven't thoroughly enjoyed. Except for the Graveyard book, I suppose. I just thought that was okay. I even got all excited when my copy of Watchmen had his doodles at the end. I mean, look at that. Adorable. And what do you know? It's 2019, and your favourite bird-based book reviewer <clears throat> is but a lowly university student, neck deep in his gay man mania. As it happens, I was also an aspiring writer. Presumably I still am, but life has a way of beating that kind of thing out of you. Who else but younger me could this course have been better aimed to? Except perhaps younger me with more money. £10 a month the website boasts, and I believe them, but it's billed annually of course. Younger me would have to find £120 to hear the advice of his favourite author. I was lucky indeed then that a friend of mine had been gifted a subscription in recognition of his successful adult circumcision. But wait! I hear you cry. That £120, doesn't it get you access to all the courses on the website? Sure, you could have eight pairs of Crocs or 160 nipple piercings, but you also get access to such fonts of wisdom as... Uh, RuPaul teaches self-expression. And zero plus hours of Kevin Hart. And... Malcolm Gladwell teaches writing. Oh, no, wait, that one's good. I've always wanted to know how to clumsily rip off academics. In all seriousness, I can see the appeal in some of the courses offered by the Masterclass platform. People want to learn from those who have succeeded in their industry rather than some professor who never quite made it. I'm sure seven plus hours of Werner Herzog teaching filmmaking is as informative as it is harrowing. I was uh, taken prisoner in Africa and one pointing a, a, a gun here, a Kalashnikov, another one here and another one here there. So that was very unpleasant. Then there's Gaiman, and let me ask you this. If you were a wildly successful, internationally best-selling author, and you wanted to share your wisdom with your many fans who had drown their own mother just to be where you are. How would you choose to share that information? How would you choose to discuss your writing that you wrote 
in a book that your many fans read in a book that you wrote in a book that they read in a book. Oh, <laughs> would you look at that? Musicals like 1970s porn films. I don't mind Stephen King. He seems nice enough, but I mean, I don't mind his writing. I liked Carrie and The Shining. I thought The Stand was pretty awful. There are many better writers, and there are many worse. But by God, is that man successful. He's the 23rd best-selling author of all time, according to Wikipedia. And that number jumps up to 13th if you account for the number of books written. He's responsible for some of the most iconic images in pop culture, from Shawshank Prison, to the spooky clown, to spooky Jack Nicholson being spooky. Here's Johnny! I'm in danger! The year is 1999. I am but a baby. Old Steve finds himself in the same predicament outlined above. He wishes to share his wisdom with his many fans. With his characteristic swiftness, he gets a draft out by the end of that year, delayed only slightly when a van smacks into him, breaking practically every bone in his body. The resultant book is On Writing, A Memoir of the Craft. Two parts writing advice to one part memoir, King talks about the most formative moments in his writing life. He talks about the inspiration for some of his most pivotal works, how he may have given up on Carrie if not for the advice of his wife, Tabitha, and about some of the events that led to his most critical ideas on writing. <laughs> not only is it interesting to read the autobiography of one of your favourite artists, you recognise certain things in them, you see parallels between their life and yours, and it gives you hope to understand that they were suffering and struggling at the same times you were. But since King weaves his lessons throughout his autobiography, it allows him to tell a story. I still remember the story of King going up against his very first editor while working on a school newspaper. How the editor took a red pen to his paragraph and struck out a dozen words like a knife over skin. That's a memorable image much more so than anyone sitting in a softly lit room and talking to camera. Hmm. Is this a recommendation of the book? Not especially. As someone who's read more than his fair share of King, and makes a point of reading as many writing advice books as legally permissible, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading about how writing kept him sane, how it drove him insane, how he used it as a crutch for his drug abuse. It was interesting to read about how writing affected his family, both through his drug addictions and through his obsession. I enjoyed reading about a writer returning to their work after a stint in rehab, and in a way it heartened me to hear that even the most successful writers can doubt their ability to recapture that magic. It's a book that teaches you not just how to become better at writing, but how to become a better writer. If you choose this life, it says, this is what you have to look out for. But you know what I love most of all about this book? What tickles me pink? What warms me to my very cockles. Take a look there. Come on, don't be shy. Right there. Do you see it? Ten great British pounds and 44 of Her Majesty's, rest in peace, finest pence. For comparison, Gaiman's course is roughly 12 times that. Fuck it. Here's a list of six writing advice books you could buy for less than half of the cost of Gaiman's course, and at the end of it, you'd still have enough money for four pairs of Crocs and a few nipple piercings. The best thing about any of those purchases is when you're done with them, once you've internalised every last comma until they're a fibre of your being, or once you've tossed them out of a window because you couldn't agree less, you're free to do with them as you wish. Turn them into trendy wallpaper for the second bathroom, make little paper boats out of them, save them for reference and reflection, or lend them to a friend. The choice is yours. In the case of Mr. Gaiman's course, however, you may have just spent 12 times the price for a quarter of the content, but after that year is up, your rights vanish. Better make that 24 times the price if you want to hold on to those rights for another year. I mean, for fuck's sake, I borrowed the elements of style from my local library. That wasn't this copy, I gave that copy back because it was from a library. This is one I bought at a later date, or may have stolen from someone else. Don't worry about it. So yes, I'm angry that he chose this format. I don't like the price, I don't like the ephemerality of it, I don't like how it puts it right out of reach for young writers, apart from those from wealthy backgrounds. But let's say you're going to be cheeky and take advantage of that 30 day money back guarantee. You're going to take extensive notes and keep those in perpetuity. What do you get for your 30 day deposit? What are you getting for your time? It hurt.
The course itself consists of 19 videos totaling 4 hours and 43 minutes, as well as 19 PDFs, each with about 3 pages of actual content. The PDFs aren't written by Gaiman. I'm not sure who they're written by, but I get the strong sense they're coming from a more script writing background, judging by how most of the examples in the PDF come from film and TV. The Godfather, Breaking Bad, The Matrix, that sort of thing. They seem to have a real fondness for Robert McKee's book's story, judging by how many times they bring it up. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's a good resource. But it is interesting how they chose someone with that sort of background in a class taught by a novelist. Although, having said that, I guess the course is called Teacher's Art of Storytelling, not Novel Writing, so I should probably just shut my mouth. Regardless of who wrote these bits, I kind of feel sorry for them. You see gay men in the videos coming up with stuff on the fly, and then you go to the PDFs and you find it clutching its temples, trying to define the terms he threw out, trying to flesh them out a bit. For example, in one of the early lessons, Sources for Inspiration, Gaiman suggests taking a well-known story and trying to turn it around, like he did with that Snow White is a Vampire and the Prince Fucks Dead People story he did. And then you go to the PDF and you find it like, Okay, here's what he means, here are some examples, some jumping off points, here are some things, suggestions, examples of literature, okay, look at all these notes, oh god, here are some exercises, some ways to jump off, you can find that, read this thing, and see it there. It's kind of like a rock star shouting to the crowd that the after party is kicking off in Vegas. So the assistant has to slam another Adderall and work out how to get 200 people on a 747 at that time of night. I'm not saying any of the course was made up on the fly, but I am saying parts of it definitely felt like they were. I mean, take this scene. Called Nicholas was. Um, let's see, do we have a smoke and mirrors here? Couldn't have done another take? Is this even happening in his house? I mean, why didn't they have this stuff ready in advance? And while we're on the topic of presentation, I really could have done without the cinematic slow-mo and the grand orchestral soundtrack. The introduction to this course is four minutes long, a minute and a half of which is spent blowing smoke up the man's ass. And that was very churlish of me, I apologise. But what about the actual advice? Highlights include part eight, in which Gaiman takes you from the conception of a short story he wrote called A March Tale, through to how he might develop it into a novel. I also like the Finding Your Voice section, with a really quite good discussion of different voice styles. I especially liked how it compared American Gods' style, what Neil calls American Transparent, and that of Stardust, which is more antique and indulgent and ornate. The low points include part six, in which Gaiman effectively reads out the beginning of the Graveyard book, and then says, so what do these characters want? As well as most of the second half of the course, depending on what you want out of it. I am interested in graphic novel writing, but even so, the section on comics went in one ear and out the other, because there's no substance to it, nothing meaty that you can latch onto, nothing actionable. Ah, oh, why did I do that? My <laughs> creaky bones. The section on editing is a good example. It's painfully thin, never getting to specific, never getting into the nouns and verbs. Nothing it says is so cursory as to be insulting, it's just thin. Compare the section on editing with this book, On Editing, by Helen Corner Bryant and Catherine Price. Now, this is 250 pages specifically about editing, structuring, tone, and submission, so I appreciate that five minutes of an online course can't quite do justice to the amount of depth that you get in a book dedicated to the subject, but then it brings me back to why did Gaiman choose this format if he knew it couldn't get him as much detail as something like a book, for example. That's a good word for the course as a whole, actually. Thin. Nothing it says is wrong or bad or insulting, it's just basic. Dishing out such crackling insights as try writing short stories and figure out what your characters want. But I can understand that if this is your first foray in creative writing, then this admittedly basic advice from someone you know and respect could go a long way yeah. to making you a better writer if you've got the money to burn. Even if you have been writing a long time, then the course might at least provide you something interesting or motivational. If you were to take all the advice from this course, strip out the slow-mo and boil it down to 20 pages, maybe with some nice illustrations, and call it something like, I don't know, <laughs> Neil Gaiman, Art Matters because your imagination can change the world because Riddell, then I'd find myself much better disposed to it. As it happens, however, I find myself feeling more cheated as much for the time as for the money. I hate how Gaiman talks like he's talking to a child. Always slow, contemplative. Wow, look at 
this advice. You paid £120 to hear. I hate how he never comes clean about the realities of life as a professional writer. The royalty disputes, the back pain, the trouble finding an agent, the trouble getting rejected by an agent, the problems, even when you do succeed, of a life where your livelihood is dependent on your creativity. But most of all, I hate the format. I think I could forgive all my critiques. I could forgive what he chooses to discuss and chooses not to discuss. I could forgive the overall childish tone if I could believe that a young writer, maybe from a working class background, could get their hands on this advice and dream, for now, about life as a professional storyteller without having to worry about the late nights and the unpaid bills and the relatives asking when you're going to get a proper job. Have you heard of accounting? It's a really good industry. I've heard they've got some real cool things going on in accounting. What do you say you do? Writing? Oh, so nothing then. Go fuck yourself. But, as we've established, this isn't for young writers, especially those from working class backgrounds. You aren't allowed it. Your favourite writer is opening up, but not to you. It's not for you. Your parents, they, they can't afford it. If it seems like I'm overreacting, just know that I came to this course from the point of view of a fan. I love Gaiman's writing. I think I always will. And any resource which aims to explain how he might have done that is a net good in the world. I don't know, I guess I was just venting the feeling I had at the time, which was betrayal. But anyone can whinge. It doesn't help young writers, game and fans or not. In the description, you'll find a list of suggested reading for people who might want to start writing fiction. There's some stuff from the course and some of my own favourites sprinkled in. No, this doesn't summarise the content of the course. I'm trying really, really hard not to get sued here, after all. But it may well be helpful for some of you who want to learn how to write, but still want to expand your croc collection. If you are a Gaiman fan, and you want to take your first steps into creative writing, and you've got money to burn, then go ahead and take the course. Have fun, and good luck. I wish you all the best. But for the rest of you, those of you who maybe can't afford it, and those of you who would rather have the words in front of you in a format you can still own 10 years from now, or for those of you who maybe want to move past the starry-eyed wonder and really talk shop, give the course a miss. I promise, you're not missing much. How long would it take for me to eat all of these books, do you reckon? Like, not the big hardback one, but just, just those ones. Like, oh god, there are already bite marks in this. Is, have I done this before?